Hey, what's going on? This is Kext Next, and today I'm gonna show you how to create a virus in Blender because I thought it was kind of topical. Um, so let's go ahead and get started creating the coronavirus. Uh oh. We can go ahead and delete our cube. And we can go ahead and hit Shift A on the keyboard to bring up our little menu here and add a sphere. And we can hit S on the keyboard and drag to scale it up a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. And now we want to go over here to our modifiers tab, add a modifier, and select subdivision surface. Change the viewport to three, so you can see we have all these little tiny faces all over the surface of the sphere. Then we just want to apply it. Now we can hit tab to go into edit mode, and we want to make sure that we're selecting faces, not vertices. So we can go up here and hit the faces button. And now we can select individual faces on the sphere. What we want to do is search for the selection tool called select random. And click it, and go to this little box down here, um, and you can see that as we move this slider, more or less of the faces are selected. So we want to drag this down to a small number, like maybe 5% down here, something like that. So we have 5% of faces selected across the sphere. And now we want to right click on the sphere and go to extrude individual faces and just drag it out just a little bit. Not too much though, but, but just enough for it to look a little bit virusy. Um, and then we can right click and hit extrude individual faces again, just a little bit. And now we want to scale each individual face up and we want to do that in the most efficient way possible. Now if we hit S on the keyboard to, to scale, you know, they're just going to go out and we don't want that. We want each individual face to be scaled up. So we can go to this little drop down box up here and select individual origins. And now when you hit S, you can see your faces get bigger and we just want to make them um, pretty big actually, about right there. And we can get out of edit mode by pressing tab again. And we want to go back to our modifier tab, hit add modifier and select subdivision surface. And change the viewport to two maybe. And you can see we have our little virus here. We can go ahead and hit apply, but we want our virus to look a little bit more organic. So let's go on over here to the modifier tab and add a displace modifier. And this looks crazy, but we can go to the texture, hit new, uh, then go to the texture tab and set the type to clouds. And this looks insane. Um, no, we're actually gonna set the size up a little bit, about there. And we can go back to the modifier tab and turn the strength down to something like 0.1. And there we go, we got our little organic looking virus. We can even, you know, right click on it and shade it smooth make it smoother, but we want to give it that, that virus edge that we see in all of those medical pictures online. So to do that, we can go to the shading workspace up here. And if you don't have it, you can just hit new, go to general and go to shading. Um, but you know, we have our little virus and we want to add a new material. So go to the material tab and hit new and it'll give us a new material. Let's set the surface to glossy. So we get a glossy little virus here. Um, and we want this to emit a little bit of light. So we can hit shift A on the keyboard and add a new emission shader, just like that. And then we want to add a new uh, mix shader node by hitting shift A on the keyboard like that and drag the emission to the to one of the shader boxes. Um, and you know, we can adjust this a little bit. But once we have that, we want to go ahead and select all three of these boxes right here and hit Control G. And this will make a group for us. Um, maybe we could even drag the color to this box in the group input tab so that we'll be able to adjust the color later on. And also drag the roughness box to this little box down here so we can adjust it later. Um, and to get out of the group, we can just hit this little arrow up here. And now we have our little group box. Uh, but we want to work on the actual virus itself. Also, I forgot to mention, connect the color properties to the same node, like that, um, and then get out of the group. Um, okay, so now we have our little group, but we want to go ahead and start uh, and start messing around with the outside of the virus. So let's hit Shift A on the keyboard and create a new layer weight node, just like that. Uh, and we want to also add a new color ramp node. And I learned this from a cool Fresnel tutorial. I'll link it in the description if you want, but he did a pretty good job of explaining it. But let's just link the Fresnel to the color ramp down here. Uh, and we can set the blend of the Fresnel to 0.6. And we wanna see this, so maybe uh, drag the color to the surface down here. So we kinda see what we're doing. And if we drag the color ramp boxes over, we can see what we're doing. 
closer they get, you know, we get we get kind of this this uh, outline of our virus. And to change the color of it, you just want to change the white box. Change it to anything you want. That looks pretty good, but we also want to add an emission shader. So go ahead and hit Shift A and search for emission shader. Put it right here and drag the color property of our color ramp to the color of our emission and drag the emission to the shader just so we can see it. And now we have a glowing, cool looking outline to our virus. Maybe we could even make it a little bit harsher, but that looks pretty cool. Now we wanna mix our group shader and our cool Fresnel thing down here. So let's go ahead and add a mix shader node like this and drag the group to the top one and emission to the bottom one. And just go ahead and connect it to the output. One more thing that we wanna do is go to the color ramp and take the color property and put it on the uh, mix shader level right here. That way we can kind of adjust it through uh, the properties down here. And also we will go ahead and set our group color to something a little bit darker. We actually set the virus color to something a little bit more harsh and also maybe make it a little bit less glossy. We can drag our color ramp sliders to kind of reveal it more. And just play around with it just a little bit to get your colors right. I think something like that looks pretty cool. And once we have that, we can go back to our layout tab and we can see our new material by clicking on our material view up here, um, or I like to use my cycles engine right here, click on the rendered tab. So that looks pretty good, um, but let's go ahead and set up our scene. So we can just, you know, hit shift D to duplicate this thing, uh, rotate it randomly a little bit, maybe shift D again, just put them all over the place, create a scene. Um, you can move them wherever, you know, hit S on the keyboard to scale them down. Whatever you want to do with them, just put them all over the place and make it look pretty organic. Uh, one problem that I ran into when doing this was I made some of them uh, similar orientations and then it looked a little goofy in the background, but you know, just make something that you think will look good whenever you render it out. I like to have one in the foreground to make it seem like it's all important, like it's the virus king or something. All right, so we can go ahead and go to our camera. And to go to our camera view, we can hit zero on the numpad, but if you don't have a numpad, if you're on a laptop, you can click this little camera button right here uh, to see through it. Um, and once we're there, we wanna hit shift and then the tilde key, which is the little funky looking one right below the escape key. And if you hit those two keys together, you can kind of look around with your camera. And you might need to kind of adjust where it is a little bit. And you can do that with this little box down here. And we can mess with our camera settings later, you know, just mess with the focal length and uh, the depth of field, of course. I like to just have my main one in focus. Another thing I like to do is have a harsh light. And when we're in the Cycles render engine, we can create a new plane um, and scale it up a little bit uh, and rotate it. You can hit R on the keyboard and then X to rotate it along the X axis. Uh, and we can just kind of Rotate it over here, R and Z along the Z axis. Stuff like that, we can just kinda move them about. And I like to give this plane a new material and give it an emission shader. Uh, and then we can change the color to something very vibrant, like purple or something. Kinda see what that's doing in the rendered view. Maybe delete our light that we have in the scene. And we can turn the strength of this emission shader up a bit so it's kinda visible. Maybe we can create another plane with Shift D and move it over here. Maybe behind the viruses and rotate it along the Z axis. And maybe give this one a new material, also an emission shader, but just make it white. So you can kind of see. I also like to make it so the camera can't see these planes. So I like to go to our object properties, go to like visibility and turn off the ray visibility of the camera so the camera can't see it. But yeah, that's how you make little viruses in Blender. Uh, if you want to, you can render this image out um, and put like a little background in there like I did. And my background is just like a cell texture that I did in After Effects with a gradient behind it. It's pretty easy. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. I don't usually do Blender tutorials, but I might do some more in the future. I really, uh, I usually do After Effects and Element 3D, but please check it out. Please subscribe. Please like my channel. I love you. See you next time.